everybody, this is Doug. In this video, I want to give you an introduction to conversion events or custom events or success events. These are all the same thing in Adobe Analytics. And so these conversion events, and that's what I'll use here, conversion events, they count the things you're trying to get people to do on your site. So if you look at your site and you look at the kinds of things you're trying to get them to do, uh, whether it's anything from this list I have here on this slide, these are the things that you're going to code on your site as an event or a conversion event. It will always give you the number of times that this happened. Or for a purchase, it'll give you other things like revenue and how much they spent and things like that. But it's always numbers, right? Conversion events always end up being metrics and they are the numbers, the how many. So whether that's how many times people viewed a product or added it to cart, checkout, et cetera, or purchased it, it could be uh, a sign up or a form completion on your site. Really on any kind of a site, there's usually some things that you are trying to get people to actually do and take an action on your site. It might be a to register or sign in or sign up for something or or watch a video or download a white paper or something or reserve something or reserve a boat. That sounds good. Um, and so <laughs> here's an example. If you have a guy standing at the entrance of the stadium and he is clicking the clicker as people come in, the clicker or the number of people that are entering, the number of times he clicks that, that would be the conversion event, right? It is entering the stadium. Now, as we've talked about EVARs on other videos, the conversion variables, those are the variations, right? Those are the variables. It's the which one. So it is which gate they came in, or info about the person like age, gender, height, etc. Any kind of variations like that, kind of which one, those are the EVARs. But the conversion events are the numbers, the how many times. And here's our example in the analytics interface where we're looking at a marketing channel report. We basically have the variable or the variation, which is the marketing channel, email, direct, social campaigns, etc. But the numbers are how many visits, how many orders, how much revenue. Those are the metrics. Those are the events. And then again, the dimension is the conversion variable. And even when you're talking about the basic traffic metrics, those really are events too, right? Because it is a person coming to the site. That's the thing you want them to do. Or they come for a visit and you're counting the visits or they click on a page you know, or they go to the next page. And so even though you might not think of these as an event or something you're trying to get them to do, it is the same thing. It is a metric based on the number of times that something happened. So again, just some info here about events in general, key actions or conversions you're trying to get them to do, and you want to record how many times that happens. It can be recorded as just counters, like I say, the clicker, or it can be recorded as a currency or other numeric values with decimals, etc. And again, they are very closely tied to conversion variables in the reports. And you'll find that when you are defining the events you want to use on your site, if you have a process like an application, then you typically want to put an event at the beginning and an event at the end, not just at the end. The end is the good part, right? Because that's when you know they have completed a process. But it's really good to put an event at the beginning as well. So you can say, you know, 10 people started and it looks like five people completed it. And so you can get those calculated metrics as well and see the percentage of people that are completing the process when they start it. So, so that's always a great thing to do if you have a process like that. Or even anywhere in between. If you can put an event on every page, you could put one in the middle if you want so that you can gauge the success of that process on your site uh, as people go through that and you can see how far they get. So those are all things that you can look at to code in a conversion event. So it's really, again, all about the quantitative information. And on the right, though, you can see that you can even have a fallout report that shows of all the people that come to your site, how many end up seeing a product, having a product view. And then after that, how many people add something to a cart, and how many people order something. So some great reports that can show you the success of these events on your site.
So if you watch the video about conversion variables or EVARs, then you'll remember this funny little analogy about the guy here as he's changing clothes and things like that. But as these EVARs are persistent, they are just really kind of waiting for an event to happen so that they can get credit for something. Where you have in the pants report, you have shorts for a while and then you have long pants. So if an event happened on page three, then the credit for that event, say it's a sign-in, would be to shorts, right? Because on page three, the value shorts has persisted from page one in that EVAR. And so the events are going to give credit to any EVARs that have values associated with them. So for example, at the end here, if we see on the page after this sequence, you had a purchase, then the reports would show how the orders are allocated to the different values. So you see in the headwear report, you had two occurrences for a hat or two pages where that was on there. And you have four where there was no hat. The order is at the very end. And so even though on the order page, you didn't set headwear to no hat, it gets credit for that because it persists. And you can see that's the same thing here. Along all these reports, typically the latest value will get the credit for the event. Anyway, I hope this helps you understand conversion events and happy coding.